Hey guys, it's the Junior Coder, and this is part 7 of the Intro to Python tutorial series. So let's get right into it. In this section, I'm going to talk to you guys about modules in Python. A module in Python is basically a file with some Python code, and we use modules to organize our code into multiple files. So instead of writing all our code in app.py, we want to break up our code into multiple files which we call modules. With this, we'll have the ability to reuse our code. For example, here in app.py, I've defined two functions. One is for when the weather is hot, and one is when it's cold. Now we can take these two functions that we defined and put them in a module. Then we'll have the ability to import that module to any program that needs these functions. So let's create a new file by right clicking our project and going to new python file. Let's call that functions.py. Then let's go back to app.py and cut all of this code and paste it in the functions module. A module is used to contain all the related functions and classes. Now let's import the functions module into app.py. That is very easy. So we type out import and then the name of the module without the extension so we don't write dot pi now we can access the functions in this module by using the dot operator so we have two functions right now is cold and is hot so we can easily call one of these functions and run our program now there's also another way for importing modules so instead of importing the entire module we can import specific functions so to do that we can type from then we add the name of our module in this case it's functions import now here when you press control and space you can see all the functions defined in this module so here we can type one of these functions with this we can directly call this function without using the dot operator compare what we have on line 4 than what we have on line 6. So, to recap, we use modules to better organize our code. Instead of writing all the code in one file, we break up our code into multiple files, which we call modules. In this section, I'm going to talk to you guys about packages in Python. Packages are another way to organize our code so currently we only have one file in our project but a real project can contain hundreds or even thousands of files so we can organize related modules inside of a package so a package is a container for multiple files so in this section I'm gonna show you how to create and use packages in Python here in our project panel right click our project and add a new directory let's call this directory time so we're going to create a package called time and in this package we're going to have all the modules for working with time so let's go ahead and create this now here we have an empty directory in order to convert this to a package we need to add a special file in it so right click this directory and add a new python file call that file double underscore init double underscore this is a special convention in python when Python interpreter sees a file with this name, it converts this directory into a package. We also have a shortcut for that in PyCharm. So if you delete this directory, let's start again. Once again, right click the project, go to new. But instead of creating a new directory, we can create a new Python package. Let's call our package time. As you can see, PyCharm automatically creates this file for us, so we don't need to manually create it. Now, in this package, let's add a new module, so create new Python file, let's call it calculations. Now, in this module, we want to add a function for calculating minutes, so define calculate underline minutes. So, in this block, we simply print minutes. Now, let's say we want to import this calculations module into app.py. So currently, this calculations module is part of our time package. So we can't import it directly. We have to start from the e-commerce package. So back to app.py. 
There are two ways to import this module. We can import the entire module or we can import one of its functions or classes. So let me show you both ways. Let's start off by importing the entire module. Import. Now what's the name of our package? It is time. So time dot calculations. So instead of typing import calculations, you type import time dot calculations. We have to prefix it with the name of its package. Now to access any of the functions and classes in this module, we'll have to type out time dot calculations dot and there you go. Now we can access the calculate minutes function. So when we run our program, we see this message printed on the terminal. However, with this approach, every time you want to call one of its functions, we'll have to prefix it with time dot calculations dot. So when working with packages, we often use the second way to import using the from statement. So we can type from time dot calculations import calculate minutes. Now, we don't have to prefix this function with time.calculations, so our code is a little bit shorter. But what if you want to use multiple functions in this calculations module? We can either import them all here, so calculate minutes, comma, let's say calculate hours, or we can import the entire module and access all the functions and classes in that module. So to import the entire module, we type out from time so we remove dot calculations then we do import calculations so now we can access all the functions and classes defined here using the dot operator so calculations dot there you go calculate minutes so these are the basics of using packages in python in this section i'm going to talk to you guys about the built-in modules in python so Python comes with a standard library that contains several modules for common tasks. So we don't have to code all of the functionalities from start. Let me show you where you can find the standard library. So open up your browser and search for Python 3 module index. So the first page here is for Python module index and it's for Python 3. So let's open that. So these are all the modules built into Python. For example, we have modules for working with date and time, Right now, you don't need to learn the whole list. As you build more programs, you'll get more familiar with the modules here. So in this section, I'm going to show you how to use one of the built-in modules for generating random values. So on the top, let's import the random module. Now, because random is a built-in module, we don't need to have a file here called random.py. So Python interpreter knows that random is a built-in module, so it knows where to find it. So let's use this module to generate some random values. So when we import this module, we'll have this object in the random. So we can use the dot operator to access its functions. One method that is very useful here is the random method. And every time we call it, it will generate a random value between 0 and 1. So here we can create a for loop. Let's say 4i in range 3. So with this for loop, we can execute this code three times. Now let's indent this. And finally, let's print the result on the terminal. When we run our program, we can see that in each iteration, we get a random value between 0 and 1. Now what if we want a random value, let's say between 10 and 20? Well, there's another method here, randint. We pass two arguments here to specify a range. So in this case, let's give it 10 and 20. So when we run a program, we get three integers between 10 and 20. If we run our program one more time, we get different values. We also have another useful method for randomly picking an item from a list. Let's say we have a list of names and we want to randomly pick a leader. Let me show you how to do that. So we define the list of names. Let's call them members. Let's set that list to John, Mary, and Bob. Now, we can call the random.choice function and pass our members list. This method randomly picks an item from this list and returns it. So we can store the result in a new variable and then we'll print that variable. Let's run our program. So the leader is Mary. If we run our program again, we'll get a different one. So, Bob, 
and if we run it again, we get Bob again. So you got the point. So the random module is very useful and you can use it for many different things. So here's a very cool exercise for you. I want you to make a program to flip a coin. So every time we run this program, we either get heads or tails. So basically, I want you to define a class called coin. In this class, we're going to have a method called toss. So every time we call this method, we get a string. So go ahead and try this exercise. You'll see my solution next. So first, I want you to import the random module. So import random. Then let's make a class. Let's call that class coin. In that class, we're going to define a function called toss. So this adds self in parentheses. And in that function, we're going to do random.choice. Then we're going to give it two strings. So heads and tails. So whenever we run this program, we either get tails or heads. So let's store that in a variable called side. And then let's return side. So now let's make an object of this class. So let's do dime. And let's set that to a coin. And then let's do dime.toss. So let's print that on the terminal and run our program. So we get heads. If we run this program again, we get tails. So every time we run it, we get a different result. So that'll be it for part 7. If you learned something, then don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Keep a lookout for part 8 of this series. And I'll see you next time. Bye.